Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. This is where we discuss the previous week in gaming and maybe go over the topic or two. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across from me as always, Alex. Hello. How are you today, Alex? I'm good. I'm tired. Yeah. You're I'm feeling it tired. Today, huh? Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit. I'll get into why I'm tired later. Check oh, us out on all of our podcast services, all the ones of your choosing. If we're not on one, reach out to us. We'll get on there. Through fire and fury, we'll get on there. Uh, head over to YouTube every Friday. Give us the five stars. Give us the thumbs up. Give us the like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. If you like that even more and want to pay us for it, we appreciate it. Head over to patreon.com slash easy achievers. Give us the buck. Helps us out a lot. Shows support. L- helps me get Alex out of his... Uh, he doesn't have a shirt on right now because he doesn't have enough money to afford a shirt. No, man. In the arms of the angel. <laughs> I can't even... <laughs> Uh, check out our socials Twitter at Evie on the Test and at Crazy Flip Skater. Let's get into the week. We got a bunch of news today. We got a bunch of Call of Duty news. We got a bunch of EA news and some Kotaku drama. But first, Alex, I have a question. Hmm. What you been playing? Elijah, I think you know what I've been playing, man. I've been playing some of that Call of Duty. Oh my god, we've been playing so much Call of Duty. Yes, man. For the first time, I think, in since seven Modern years for three. Six years. I give you that Bing shirt. Yeah, as we thank re- you. As we talk. Thank you. Because I, I, Modern Warfare, I love it. Mm-hmm. Right. There are some issues, of course, specifically <clears> with <throat> bugs. We have a friend that, that has crashed, hard crashed, not just a couple times. Regular crash. He's crashed like two or three times every time we play. <laughs> it's pretty insane. We've been fine. So yeah. th- one out of three people, the three people being us, yeah. crash. So don't like the odds, but we're doing great. Yeah. Um, I love the multiplayer. I'm f- very excited to finally yeah. have a Call of Duty where I'm excited to unlock things. It's been eight years. Whew. November was 8th, close. 2011 was Modern Warfare 3. It's been a while. And I haven't really played since then. I yeah. played Black Ops 1, 2. I played all Modern of them. Modern Warfare 1, 2, stay. 3. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That is true. Yeah. I have played all of them except Black Ops 4. I didn't even touch it. I played that I one. literally didn't even start it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have the game and I never started. Yeah. I love this one though. Yeah. I'm having God, so yes. much fun. The campaign, sir? You finished it today, didn't you? Yes, I did. I did as well. As of recording, we did both finish the campaign. No spoilers, of course. What did you think? First, as of recording today is October 30th, so a day before Halloween. Mm. Spooky, scary skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> that, dude, that no, yeah. <laughs> Um, if you guys want to get something stuck in your head, search spooky, scary skill. I don't know what it's actually called. Just type that in and something will play. Alex's wife showed it to us. And I'll it's, have to ask her because, yeah, it's, it's, and it's, it's something. And it's weird because, uh, well, what is it? Is it? Well, we were playing for, yeah, we were playing Fortnite. Mm-hmm. And when you're on the battle bus, yeah. it's the <laughs> same exact <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> it sounds like it. It's just so weird. <laughs> but, um, back, back to Call of Duty. Yes. Uh, it's, oh, the story was, was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, we'll get more into spoilers. Or, uh, Speaking like, of the story. Oh, God. We have some drama. Activision's latest Call of Duty game has sparked a backlash for its depiction of Russia. Shocking. Shocking. Yeah, right? Russia's always on the other end of the stick in every Modern Warfare game, and this is no <laughs> different. Trust me. You're over there on the other side. Man, again? Why am I the bad guy? Trust me. Let's get into it a little bit. First, Activision's late. This uh, sorry, over on MSN by Charlie Wood. Good. Activision's latest Call of Duty game is facing a fierce backlash in the Russian media for its depiction of the Eurasian country. Despite being praised by many Western video game publications since its release last week, the title has not gone down well in Russia, which features heavily in the game. The game has received thousands of negative user reviews on the review aggregated Metacritic with users, many of whom wrote in Russian, variously accusing it of misrepresenting and even slandering the country. On Metacritic, the average rating given by the users of the PlayStation 4 version of the game stands at just 3.4 out of 10 <laughs> at the time of writing. One user writing in both English and Russian demanding that you, Activision, quote, return me my money. And, quote, another accused of its Russia phobia, while a third accused Activision ability of demonetization. 
demonizing. 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 I've actually never seen that written out. Yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Demonizing Russia. Russian media outlets have also reported criticizing the game. According to the BBC state TV channel, Rosia 24 released a, uh, that's where I get all my news, released a four minute report criticizing Call of Duty while a prominent Russian blogger branded the game too much. Oh God, I love that. I love that. That's a bit much. I, I like that. I like that. In a tweet on Tuesday and called for Russian gamers to boycott it and show some respect for themselves now did they ever do this or was it even a thing when model warfare 2 came out and that mission they pulled it from the shelves okay so i don't remember what happened then with no yeah russian. they were not happy with that okay <laughs> they were very much not happy yeah. if you do not remember no russian was a mission in call of duty Modern warfare 2 where you play as an undercover agent assisting in a mass shootout of an airport in russia oh my god and the and it, and you were with other Russians killing yeah. innocent Russians in a very populated airport. Yeah, literally just come out. It it was yeah, come out of the elevator and just go. Just and go you have a machine yeah. gun. You just shoot all these innocent yeah people. That was crazy. That was weird. Weird choice. I get. They wanted the shock value. I'm not gonna lie. The this, first time I played it, it was like you you open the door and it's like shoot, and I was like, should I shoot? I don't know. I. When I, and I was, what what was I? So that was seven years ago. So I was sixteen. We were young. I was young. I was yeah. a young lad. Yep. I barely able to walk, and mm-hmm. I don't think I shot first. I think after a while, I shot just to see if something else would happen. Yeah. Because I guess spoilers for Modern Warfare, you get shot at the end. Mm-hmm. So originally, I was like, maybe I didn't sell it enough thinking maybe I can get a different outcome. Yeah. Obviously, it never changes no matter what you do. No, you just have to go through it, and that was horrible. Yeah. Um, uh, back to the original story. Mm-hmm. With the original story being, you know what, Alex? Mm-hmm. No. No, I'm not doing this. What? We just spent an hour trying to fix an audio issue, <laughs> and I'm upset. Because I didn't want the audience. I- I'm sure someone's going to be like, why does Alex sound drastically different from before? Yeah, it sounds very different. We right had now. we had an issue with one of our patented <laughs> Blue Yeti mics. <laughs> it just started crackling really weirdly. I don't know if anyone else uses Blue Yeti mics, but if you have any solution, reach out, please, for the love of God. Yeah, it just randomly started, and I apologize if I sound weird to anyone because through yeah, our headsets, it, it sounds like fine. It, it sounds weird, but like the recording sounds fine after. Yeah, the, the recording sounded pretty good. Yeah, I. Die. Nobody would believe rest. what I'm using right now. <laughs> I don't think they would either. He's using. I'm using a pair a of Hello Kitty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> using a pair of Astro A40s right. with the mix amp. Right, and it's holding up. Yeah, it's holding better up. than what I expect. Yeah, <laughs> back to the story. Right, let's go. Most to the story of the controversy stems to seems to stem from the game's Highway of Death mission, which sees players advance <laughs> along a highway while sniping at Russian forces. Users have claimed that the highway depicted in the mission resembles a real-life road called Highway 80, which links the Iraqi city of Basra and the Kuwaiti town of Al-Jarrah. The road was dubbed Highway of Death in the 1990s due to its prominent role in the Gulf War. For your history, not uh, as history astute to people out there, and it's Perfectly fine not knowing, but I will update you just in case you do not know. The Highway of Death was a basically escape route for the original uh, city uh, they mentioned, Basra, to go to the Kuwait town to escape from the Gulf War. The issue with this being it was a mix of military personnel and civilians. No one knows the exact amount of deaths that happened on which sides, on who was military and who was perno, but the U.S., Canada... UK and French military bombed the entire highway and killed thousands, I think, of people. And again, we don't know, and I don't think they've ever really delved into how many were murdered, but look up pictures. It looks pretty awful. And if you look in the game, it does look exactly like the pictures do. I was about to ask, does it... It looks... Did they depict it pretty... The exact same same thing? Basically the exact same. You remember the mission, Alex? Yes. Light spoilers. I'm just going to describe the road. The Spoilers road, here. The road is just a regular road, of course, but there are vehicles all over the sides because they did strafe runs through yeah. the middle, so that means everything explodes and goes away. And that's exactly what the real life one looks like. Yeah. Now, in the game, they do not say American, uh, American, French, 
Mm. Oh, those people bombed it. They say the Russians themselves, by themselves, bombed it and kind of pegged them as the bad guy, even though I'm I'm a little rough on my go for, but I don't even think Russia was... I mean, of course they were involved, but they weren't like super involved in this, I don't believe. I think they were just backing the Iraqi people. Um, I do not remember off the top of my head, but I digress. That is the main controversy. Um, I don't think it's as extreme as no Russian because no one's pulled off the shelf, yes, but I do... I do understand the point of a Russian civilian mm. saying, yeah, that sucks because I'm the main bad guy in the series for the fourth time. Yeah. <laughs> and you are depicted as pretty ruthless, unfairly so. To be fair, though, uh, of course, the Russian democracy, it. Has it been recording? No, you're fine. Oh, okay. Terrified, yeah. guys. I'm terrified yeah, guys. of of anything happening. I look over. I don't see me recording at all. I'm like, oh my no, god. No, no, you're you're I'm the you're, bottom. you're the bottom okay. one. Okay, okay. I see. Yeah, that's no, what it is. I'm the, Jesus top, I'm the top one. Now. I'm stressing out everybody. No, I haven't <laughs> changed the names. You're fine. <laughs> Good lord. Back we've to had, this. We've had a day. Yes, we did. Activision Blizzard has also seen raising controversy, of course, with their decision to ban Mr. Blizzard. Um, so this is just piling, 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 piling on top of each other. Sticking with Call of Duty, we're moving on to the IGN story. Call of Duty makes plenty of headlines with their sales. Call of Duty breaks multiple sales records. This is, again, over on IGN by Mr. Adam Baykhurst. Call of Duty Modern Warfare has earned more than $600 million worldwide and has broken multiple sales records in its first three days of release. Announced by Activision, Call of Duty Modern Warfare's impressive first three days has earned its falling records. It has become the top-selling new premium game release of 2019. It has now sold more units in the first three days than any other Call of Duty title this console generation. It had the biggest-selling digital opening in Activision history. It set a PlayStation 4 record with the highest digital sales in its first three days. It had the biggest Call of Duty PC launch ever. Call of Duty Modern Warfare's first three years were so successful. According to Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick, it even, quote, more than doubled the box office opening of Joker, which is a very weird thing to break up, which brought in an estimated $234 million worldwide. That's kind of a random... Yeah, well, good movie, but it was... <laughs> I don't think they're talking about the good movies. It's just weird that he just <laughs> randomly brought up Joker. Yeah, I, I mean, I, don't know. I guess it's like a. It, it reminds me of the memes where it's like weird, weird flex, but okay. Yeah, it's like that was a, unneeded, but all right. <laughs> With the sales records, Alex, mm-hmm. Activision does this every year where they say we did this and this, but it's very specific. Mm-hmm. It had the biggest Call of Duty PC launch ever. That's random, right? Yeah, it said a PlayStation Four record with highest digital sales in the first. Like these really weird statistics. Like for- yeah, so. They do this every year, I feel, to make it sound bigger than it, it actually is. But to be fair, of course, they sell a lot. $600 million. It's nothing to scoff at, of course. Mm-hmm. I think the biggest um, sale we've seen, it was Grand Theft Auto Five back in the day. Remember that made a billion, I think, in the first 24 hours? Or was it like two days? Something like that. Yeah. Something incredible. Well, in the article, if you scroll if you scroll more down, mm-hmm. there, there was a tweet by Daniel Ahmad. And it shows oh, Mr. Daniel. other. Oh, it does. And it shows other titles compared to Call of Duty launches in the first three days. For example, Black Ops Four was five hundred million in the first three days. Whoa, Call of Duty World War Two five hundred million. Infinite, <laughs> Infinity War- Infinite Warfare. <laughs> shush, shush, never, never existed. existed. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Black Ops Three five hundred fifty million. Uh, this was the one that was conf- uh, su- surprised. Modern Warfare 3, 400 million, but that was in one day. That was in one day. So y- yeah. in, I, you can imagine in two more days, they yeah. surpassed 600 million. Black Ops 1, more. 360 in one day. Uh huh. So another situation. I think it's intriguing that Advanced Warfare, no number for three days. I, I think Interesting. maybe because he just couldn't, maybe they couldn't find any? No, they, they're saying they didn't state sales. Oh, for, so for Advanced Warfare and days. Ghosts. Meaning. Which it is didn't crazy. sell great. It's crazy because Ghost wasn't that bad. I actually rather I, like Ghost. I rather play Ghosts than Black Ops three and four. Yeah, but I don't like any of those. <laughs> so I mean, it's like whatever. I, yeah. I get it. I've met a lot of people who love Ghosts, and I just no. no it's cool because Ghost it, was the last one that was normal, like boots on ground before Bla- uh, Black Ops three and all the other yeah, ones. Cra- if it was like Advanced Warfare, I think it was the last mm-hmm. the one after that. Mm-hmm. I'll take Black Ops two any day. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, Black Ops. Black Ops Three is like a weird haze to me because I remember like the story was like. Isn't that the one with Kit Harrington? No, that's Infinite Warfare. 
Ah, they all blended. I know. They all sucked. They didn't suck. I just I just can't tell you anything between Black Ops 3, Infinite Warfare, Advanced Warfare. None of those leave any yeah, impressions garbage. on me. Ghosts, I hate them all. And now. What did you think of the campaign overall? I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot, too. Yeah. We'll go more in our spoiler cast, of course, but just top down, should people buy this game? Yes. I think so, too. Yes, because yeah. it's... Um, it's uh, it's pretty much like COD is saying we're back. I think so too. So I, like, I think yeah. I think it's like, hey guys, I know you missed the simplicity. Yeah. I would say he'd be like, we're they back. They do Missing? still have the issues <laughs> with the camping. That's always yes, a Call of Duty. I mean, well, that's a Call of Duty. This is always. I, mean, I don't think that will really ever change. The only thing that changed yeah. that was I think Black Ops three and four, mm. or sorry three, because you can move so fast. Yeah, and they I'm do. Have I did like Black Ops 3's multiplayer a little bit because yeah. I did feel really cool jumping off walls and stuff. Yeah, if no, I you feel powerful. And the, and the only thing I did like was I can roll and shoot people with a shotgun. Yeah, or I'm, no, sorry, uh, slide. Yeah, I, I mean, they, I've noticed they do have a little issues with spawning. I don't know. I just feel like this one's really yeah, bad with certain spawns. I do think, and it, it depends on has, the map. So I do think that has to do with the map because yeah. the maps are small to force encounters like that. But oh. you do get in the issue where you don't have a place to spawn because there's a person in every spawn point yeah so like they just i guess crazy. roll the dice and i just put you the spawn i get sniped yep I'll, I'll spawn run forward because i'm not expecting someone and it's yep. <laughs> remember that one match it was just everybody left there was only us two oh, versus God. that whole team we were getting smacked up that was f- that was pretty funny though yeah because no, <laughs> i kept just trying to run away and try to fight someone yeah, yeah for sure for sure ea back in the news today huh oh so they had a earnings call. If you don't know what an earnings call is, it's basically a giant call where you tell all your stockholders how good everything is and what your future is and how bright and happy that you have their Pretty money. much, they're, are we doing, are they doing their job? Yeah, and you basically lie to them. <laughs> EA's future pipeline includes new IP from Motive, new projects at DICE, Bioware, Maxis, and Criterion, new mobile titles, new EA sports titles, new partner titles, uh, EA original titles, amazing games. Uh, I'm going to read their quote. Amazing games are the very core of our business growth. We have a powerful and diverse portfolio of games across genres, fulfilling a breadth of motivations for our players, from escape in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order to competition through EA Sports to social connection in Battlefield 5 and more. Creativity fuels our future in our studios, have more and more uh, experiences in development. New IP at Motive, Dice, Bioware, Maxis, and Criterion. New mobile titles, new titles, EA Sports, new indie and third-party developers. L will continue to excite and grow our global audience. And this is all from Daniel Amon's Twitter. It's a fantastic Twitter if you do not follow it. He's just he's basically an insider analyst. Goes over a bunch of things. Earnings call just like this. Gives you stats. Fantastic gentleman to follow. Now, we're going to also go from that to a breakdown a little bit of the actual earnings call. So, this is over on IGN by Joseph Kahn. EA not releasing a Battlefield game in next year, aiming for fiscal year 2020. In the company's earning call Tuesday, EA announced that it will not release a new Battlefield game next year. This is the first time EA has broken the usual one and a half, two year, one and a half to a two-year cycle between Battlefield games since Battlefield Bat Company. Game industry analyst Daniel Ahmad of Nyko Partners noted that EA confirmed it will release the next Battlefield game will ship in fiscal year 2020, which begins April 2021 and ends in March 2022. EA also confirmed that Apex Legends would be its primary focus. Apex Legends has just reached 70 million players. Dang. What did you say, Alex? No, I was just saying that's just crazy. Well, what do you think? What's um, crazy? It's just the that they're actually taking a break mm-hmm. from Battlefield. Mm-hmm. Is it an EA thing? Or is it... Are you saying that because it's EA? Or are you saying that because... I think there is. I think it's because... I mean, like you just said, they want to focus more on Apex. They've noticed Apex is getting a lot of uh, hits. And Battlefield has not. I'm curious if they're noticing that the service industry is working. Yes. Games of a service. Yeah. Multiple, like, keeping the same game and constantly getting revenue from it. Yeah. Maybe that's what they're actually liking from it. Mm. Maybe. I'm very curious on what they see in the back end that they're like, we need to focus on this. Or are they just like, we need to focus on this stuff to make the other stuff good. Because EA is in a rough spot, similar to Bethesda, I feel where their name has kind of sullied things, right? Star Wars mm-hmm. Battlefront 2, of course, is the easy example you can bring up. Um, no one was really hyped with the Battlefield 5. I mean, does anyone even talk about that anymore, I feel? So, didn't I do something come out for it, and we didn't even... Pacific yeah, that. thing. We talked about that last week. Yeah. It was... It looks fine. I, I Again, yeah. I... 
I want it to be great. Right? Yeah. Oh, you always want Battlefield to be great, right? But you, I you, used to love I Battlefield. Like, I played 3 and 4 a lot. But There was also another thing from there, Alex. Mm. It was the tweet came out, right? Oh, yeah. Daniel Mod reached out and said they are looking at remasters oh. of fan favorite classics. Oh, man. March 2020 by March 2020. Mm. Mass Effect. Dead Space, maybe? God. These things are possible. Let's hope and pray. God, also, Dragon Age was delayed, unfortunately. Damn it. But <laughs> we'll get it soon. I think One day. I think the reason is because they messed up Star Wars and Mass Effect and Anthem. Mm. They're like, pull this back. Yeah. We're going to make sure this one's good. And then we're going to release it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, we're Because, gonna I just... mean, look at Anthem. They thought, I mean, it looked great. Exactly. <laughs> look it at looked, Anthem. It looked great. Just everyone just stop we what you're doing and, and look at Anthem. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Remember that was a game that came out and... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Nope, I don't see it. I don't see it anywhere. What I is it? See it anywhere. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Where is it, Anthem? Where are you? This is just kind of a rumor, but I love rumors. And I'm very curious about this game. Ghost of Tsushima... Um, this is over on uh, Jason Schreier. He just kind of dropped some... Insider news, Ghost of Shima doesn't have a public release date yet, but it will also be bumped later into 2022 account for this delay. Speaking of the delay, over on Kotaku, The Last of Us, delayed to spring, May 29th. Sad. So upset. Of course, uh, by Mr. Jason Schreier. Moving from that <clears throat> directly to uh, the tweet I was referencing previously, um. Yes, to account for this delay. Do not expect them to suddenly turn into a PS5 game or anything, but it uh, but it was originally planned for the first half of the year, not anymore. Isn't that hard to believe? That Ghost of Tsushima was planned for where Last of Us is about to release. That that I would That's no. mad. I like right? I just like how I is thought that, that real? was gonna be a twenty twenty one game. They're it trying was to make like it a twenty twenty game? Mm. What? We've seen literally what? We've seen Not, one trailer. We've seen one trailer, of and they play. want it to come out in four or five months. It seems hard to believe, right? I don't. And Mr. Jason Schreier has proven time and time again of his credibility. That's why I do not doubt him mm-hmm. uh, that this is true. It's just so hard to believe. I'm having trouble wrapping my head around. They released Last of Us, and then I guess a month later they just say that Ghost of Tsushima is dropping in two months. That I feel just like that's seems, just hurting ghosts. It just seems weird, right? And we're already going to see weirder things because we're so late in the generation. Right? Yeah. Of course, Last of Us doesn't care. They're going to make a bunch of money. But I don't know. It seems off. Something I don't know. I, again, I trust him fully. So I'm, thinking, I'm sure he's right. Because it said later 2020. I'm hoping they just hold it till holiday 2020 for and, ma- and make that. it a PS5 release. Again, I still would be surprised, though, because... I haven't heard any. Like, you would think you'd hear something. Maybe they're just doing new yeah. approaches similar to God of War, kind of. Mm-hmm. Where God of War didn't, you saw didn't see that a did. lot of God of War, right? Yeah. Like, so maybe that's what they're going for, where it's like, talk less and less about it to get people intrigued, to then slowly get them more and more intrigued, and then show them a few trailers, and then boom. You, yeah, because, like, I mean, for, for God of War, we only heard about it maybe twice before we got it. We heard it about the year prior. We got it. At, yeah, we at saw the, the E3 trailer, E3, and yeah. then PlayStation Six experience. Yeah, and then it came out the following April. Yeah, the yeah. following year. And that's it. The very beginning. So what? That was six months, probably, right? July, and then between April, so ten months. Ten months. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty good turnaround time, by the way. You get to announce and launch yeah. that confidently. That's very impressive. That's why I was like, I'm surprised with Ghosts, but like, I I think they're gonna try. I or at least I hope. Maybe they'll show something at E3, one more trailer, maybe like a gameplay trailer, and it'll come out holiday for PS5, and there'll also be a PS4 copy, of course. If not, yeah, February 2021. Agree. There's no way it could come that, out. How do you think that works? What? I have a PS5. Okay. Right? I want to play Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. I buy the PS4 copy. Do I just put that in? Do you think I have to pay for an upgrade? Um, I know they already said it's backwards compatible. Yeah, that's what's weird. Do I get the free Xbox X enhancements? You know, like that. I don't know. Kind of, like, um, what I heard before is what they do is like because remember a long time ago, for example, when Black Flag came out on 
both. Three, uh, both 360 and Xbox One. Or, or and PS3 and PS4. If you put your PS3 disc in the PS4, it'll prompt you and it'll be like, oh, do you want to upgrade to the PS4 version for 10 bucks more and you get like a digital copy of the PS4 version. Really? Yeah. Wow. I never tried it, but I, cool. I was listening to another podcast and they yeah. said that they did that. And I was like, really? But yeah, I, I didn't know. That I, that's the only game I've ever heard of doing that. So I'm wondering if they'll do that hmm. or they'll just take a maybe like another approach and be like, oh, interesting. May, or I don't I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking maybe you put the. I was just thinking I wouldn't be out. I don't know if consumers would be okay. I don't even know if I'd be okay with paying sixty dollars for a game, Mm -hmm. putting my PS4 copy when let's say it comes a week. uh, Let's say it comes a month before the PS PS5. I buy Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. I put my disc into my PS5. It reads it, but then to get my fullest experience, I have to pay another ten bucks. Would you be okay with that? I don't even know. I think I would be fine with it. See, I mean, I think the game is just going to be the same price overall. So I don't like. If you have a PS5, not why not get the PS5 copy? Right, but I'm think I'm just speaking high. No, no, I, I know, I, know I understand, I understand. But, but yeah, I don't think they'll do that. So like, I don't think so either. I think they'll just have for like for people who have PS4, they'll be that copy, mm-hmm. and people who have PS5, they have their copy. And of course, PS5 one is gonna look a lot better and run better for sure. Right? Yeah. Sticking with Kutaku, okay. this is a mess of a story now because a lot of drama has happened. Okay. So I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to piece this as well as I can to for you guys. Again, some of this stuff doesn't exist anymore because it was taken down. That will make sense in a second. All right. So original story, Kutaku directs hate, quote unquote, to the parent company over ads. Kutaku stated that they have heard that their autoplay ads were basically disliked by their community. This is my write-up, by the way. This is not taken from anybody. They were disliked by the community. And they made it uh, obvious that the editorial staff of Kotaku has no controls over ads, right? That's just not their thing. Their parent company, I think it's Geo. Do you do me a favor? Can you look up parent company of Kotaku? I'm pretty sure gotcha. it's, um, God, what's their name? Geiger or something like that. Um, but basically, in that thing, they say, hey, your concerns are concerns, right? This is the email to our CEO and our parent company. <laughs> And they just drop their email in the article. And this was basically put down by everyone in the uh, in the place. Now. Gawker Media? Gawker. Thank you. It was Gawker. Now, drama doesn't even start there. A couple of days before this, Gawker made it obvious to each of their people, right? Because they have several sports sites. They have Kotaku for games. They basically made it clear that if you talk about sports or games you talk about sports and games you do not talk about the politics in sports or games and you do not talk about anything other than your so basically stay in your lane Mm. someone was actually fired because they uh basically weren't with the rules so they fired somebody over already right cuts to this right uh, Kutaku puts this up. Jason Schreier tweets out, if the atrocious ads on our website are bothering you, here's how to contact Kotaku's new private equity owner management team. So they fairly put his email address mm. or their team's email address there to our fans, right? So they can have a direct message to them. Now, about, let's see. This was all uh, October 28th when all this happened. So two days ago as of recording. He then, same day, says the article is no longer up. The staff of Kutaku did not remove it. So that means Gawker, or the management team, went in and took down their article with, of course, no permission of them. Now, uh, and this is the next day, someone was fired from Deadspin for not sticking to sports. This is Mr. Barry Pecheski. This is retweeted by Jason Schreier. Now, this is another update from the GMG Union, which is what everyone um, follows, right? Mm. This is where all the basically, dead, I think, dead spent people are with. Earlier today, Jim Spanfeller, CEO of Gawker Media, fired our colleague and longtime dead spent deputy editor, Barry Petschke. This will not stand. We will have updates soon. A quick follow up after that. Um, Jason Roy puts up I do not know what's going to happen next, but to everyone who has read and supported our work at Kotaku over the years, thank you. Uh, another tough day at the office. I've steered Kutaku through some rough waters before thanks to one Maisie King. Can I do it again? We'll see. Now, I'm trying to find something very specific. I cannot find it. Damn it. That's fine. Essentially, there was a mass quit. Mm-hmm. 
So basically their whole uh, Deadspin team, basically everyone in the union did a mass quit and everyone quit. Jesus. So we're basically at this Mexican standoff between everybody and I don't know who's winning. We're at that now and I don't know who's going to win and who's edging out in this. So that's the update. Look into it more well, as a threat. Yeah. So at the I mean, weekend, the only we, of course, we'll give you an update next week. The only thing that I can see out of it is like, what are they trying to gain at the end of all this? Who? Gawker? I mean, I guess either of them. So Gawker seems to be trying to control them, and they don't like that, right? Okay. They said, stick to sports to Mr. Deadsp- the Deadspin, right? Yeah. Guy says, I'm not going to stick to sports. I'm an editor. I write what I write. Yeah. If I want to talk about, for instance, Colin Kaepernick kneeling. Okay. That has political overtones. He's going to talk about that. For him not complying, he gets fired. Because do you think that's a silly rule? Do you agree with the man? It's fine either way. What do you think? Um, I I feel like, yeah, I mean, if you're, I mean, yes, it's your job. So, like, if you're going to be told something, I mean, do it. But I, I also, I'm, I'm a, like, be like, you just you, you shouldn't just stick to one thing. You should be able to do something else. Right. I personally do not agree with any of this. Yeah. I don't agree with ever, if someone walked up to me and said, Elijah, your Twitter account sucks. You can only talk about games from now on. No, yeah, no, that's, that's, not, that's not gonna happen, right? Yeah. If I if I wrote for Kotaku and my management came down to me, I'm a talented art, uh, uh, reporter, just like Mr. Jason Schreier is, and tells me don't talk about anything else other than games, I'm gonna be like. All right, I'm I'm making an article about the Atlanta Falcons next. Yep. Because <laughs> that I mean that's I, I to me that's unnecessary and. Yeah. It's it starts a conversation that never needed to have happened. So I'm very curious how this develops. We have no further information. Yeah. I will move on. This is over on GameSpot by Chris Pryor and Steve Watts. Rainbow Six Quarantine, Watch Dogs, Legions, and the God of Monsters delayed after Ghost Recon disappoints. This is over on GameSpot again. Three of Ubisoft's biggest upcoming games have been delayed. Release dates for Watch Dogs Legion, Rainbow Six Quarantine, and Gods of Monsters are all now scheduled for company's 2020-21 fiscal year. This means the soonest we can expect of them is April 2020, although it seems as though they'll be further into 2020 before the first of them arrives. Previously, Watch Dogs Legion was set for March 6th, and Gods of Monsters was scheduled for February 25th. Rainbow Six Quarantine was set for this fiscal year, which ends on March 31st. The new fiscal year targets means the games will release by March 31st, 2021. In an investor call, Ubisoft suggested Watch Dogs Legions and God of Monsters are planned for the second half of 2020. Specific release dates for none of the games were announced, while a fourth Skull and Bones has also apparently been pushed back until at least April 1st, 2021. Jesus. I feel like that game is DOD, dude. Well, I don't think we're getting that game for a long time. And well, if we do, I think it will They had to be... restart everything because they, they were like, Skull and Bones was just a, a naval... Uh, attack, combat, whatever. Right, you were a boat. Yeah, so it's pretty much... Remember the Assassin's Creed uh, ship battles? It was pretty much just that. But uh, everybody thought it was cool, but they were like, well, can I, get, can I get out of my ship? And they were like, no. And they just look over? Um, yeah, no. so they completely like, had what? to add uh, stuff. So now, like from what I saw, they, you, you Would can... Would you have had a problem with that? Huh? Would you have had a problem with that? Yeah. It's a multiplayer-only game, it seemed... Yeah, and it seemed like you just had multiplayer fights with people. Didn't I? Don't know if there would have been a story in that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I rather be able to. It's pretty much <laughs> Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but for like, multiplayer. Yeah, just give me that. I mean, like, cause it looks. Co- I mean, it looks. It looks cool. I will take. But I wanted to. I wanted I'll to get take out a of the pirate ship. game, dude. If, if that's it's what I'm just saying. Black Flag. That's what I'm saying. Like, me, if fam. I can, I, I wanted to be able to get out of the ship, walk around, go to a port, chill. If I can drink, drink. I mean, mm-hmm. okay. For example, Sea of Thieves. But Sea of Thieves is it's more it's it's different. So like, I want what Assassin's Creed Black Flag was, but multiplayer. Mm, so like the option. Yeah, like, I want the option people. to be able to play right. with people. So like, let's say you and me want to ho- uh, like get together. Hook up. Yeah. 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 We'll yeah, hook we'll up. Hook right. up with yep. Um, and like you know, we'll go sailing. Try to catch the Kraken, you know, it's, it's yeah, just funny stuff. I, know, I get it. I, dude, I'm with it. If hopefully Skull and Bones come out good, usually when yeah. it's been pushed back three times, that is not a good sign. No, hopefully it's a good game. Yeah, I again, Ubisoft seems to have taken a dip in quality, so I'm hoping they're just kind of gonna like rubber band back. Yeah, because Ghost Recon Breakpoint, from what I've heard, Mm-mm. is rough. Yeah, not fun. And it was what my friend said, Brian. 
said it was broken. I yeah. don't know how broken it was for him. He just said the word and broken. He, and, and he usually loves he these lo- kids. He loves Wildlands. So like he, yeah, he loved Wildlands. He, he's our everything. he's our reporting on Coast Recon, and yeah. he did not like it. So, and he was the easy one to like. Like you yeah, would he, think, Brian, you know, people like that. That's indigo. That would be the easy yeah. people to excite. So if you don't have them, no, yeah, who do you have? Because he's like into it. Like I mean, God, he's he was loving to WWE Two K Twenty, and with all those bounces and all that. Random stuff happening. I forgot about that game. Yeah, because I was like, I walked up to him and, he, and I was like, "So is your is your?" By the way, the patch that they said, "Oh, we're gonna fix it." Yeah, it doesn't come out for like another two weeks. Yeah, don't so expect it's broken that for another touched. two weeks. Oh yeah, no. I bet you nobody's even talking about that game after that no, first day. No, it's over. It's yeah, over. it's gone. Yeah, it's over. Um, we're gonna go back to the story because there's a interesting thing I want to bring up. In a statement, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillemot. Explain that its recent AAA releases have been met with disappointing reception, in particular Ghost Recon Breakpoint. He says this is partly due to live games coming too close together and not having enough differentiation. He also more generally said that new features aren't being given the time to be perfectly optimized. It's in the context that he says delays on these next three projects are necessary. Props to him, man. He's being he's being real. You will not see this <clears throat> over many uh, calls like this. Yeah, he's being <clears throat> straight up with his business partners, and I respect that. Uh, "Quote: We are talk. Uh, we are tackling these issues head on, and are already implementing specific changes to our uh, production processes." Gilmont said, "We are confident in our capacity to adapt and evolve, and we have done so successfully many times in the past. In this overall context, we have decided to postpone releases of God of, uh, God of Monsters, Rainbow Six Siege, and Watchdog Legions, which." Watch of those Legions is one that really messes with me. Oh, God, yeah, because I was so excited so for that excited. game. And they didn't even give us a date. They're just like, no. it's gone. Yeah. Like, we're not, it's not, it's not coming out. Yeah. Why do you think so? Right? He says to polish. Do you, I wonder if it's just to polish or if it's literally to be like, I wonder if there's like a, a I think a, there's a, something going on to where they, I want to, I want to say something in their books, like money wise. You're like, we have to push this because money yeah. wise, we're gonna, we've already lost this fiscal year, so yeah. let's push it back and have a great next fiscal year. Or something. I mean, like that. have you know, if you see, Watch Dogs was supposed to come out around March. There's other games coming out around March. Um, That's very true. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you don't want to get put that at, like, for example, what the the uh, now? Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Last of Us was February. Now it's May. So. In about a three month period, yeah. we have Cyberpunk in April. Okay. We have uh Last of Us in May. Uh-huh. What's in March now? Something else. Final Fantasy. Yeah. Those are three huge, huge titles. titles. So Watch huge. Dogs would have sunk. I mean, even though it's gonna be a great game Fantastic. Compa- compared to those, it's gonna be I don't know. I f- Feel like it would have sold fine because it's going up against Final Fantasy. If it was going up against Cyberpunk, it would have it would have yeah. been socked out of the. It would have been laying on the ground. Yeah. Final Fantasy, I feel, is so different that they have a different audience that they're tackling. Yeah. And if you're buying both of those games, you're in. You're in. So like, you're buying yeah. both those games. If like, I don't know. Let's read the tweet that the actual team wrote out. Right, so Watch Dogs Legion's team wrote out to us. Our ambition with Watch Dogs Legion is to deliver an unforgettable experience that changes the way you can play and think about open world games. With our play as anyone feature, every character in our world has a persistent life, and anyone from an entire population of London can be recruited into your dead sec team to become the hero of your game and the star of your personal story. We are embracing the opportunity to take additional time to deliver this ambitious vision at the best possible level of quality and bring our near future London to life in the ways it deserves. We are confident this will ensure Watch Dogs Legion is the emergency innovative experience we set out to create and the one you aspire to play we look forward to sharing more with you very soon i wonder because you know how each um what's it called each damn person it? yeah each person NPC. in the game and thank you npc uh, you can you can recruit them and play as them which is wild yeah which i mean god let I me mean, just imagine how many npcs so like let's say you play you played Watch Dogs too oh, yeah Every I mean, God, person. look how many NPCs are just I was walking thought, I, around. I already had thought it was impressive that each person had a story. Oh, God, and, yeah. But I mean a story they had a sentence about them. But still, no, yeah, though, that's still. still impressive. And they almost just, all the time just were Just the detail new. that they put for each character. Now you can play as them. That's ridiculous. Wild. Yeah. Very exciting, though. Yeah. Is there a chance this is bad? What do you mean? Does this take a gross recon big point and it just comes out and it's just, wow, that was bad? Um... I think that's why they. I think I feel like I have they want to make up. sure that doesn't yep. happen. Yep, I get it. I'm wondering if maybe they were just playing it for a while, and then something happened to where, like, let's say there was a break, 
And you're like, whoa, that's not that just happened. So we'll give it. A I think it's incredible that they just said, all right, it's being pushed. Yeah. No, no. We have no idea when that's coming out now. We just yep. know that at some point we're getting the game in the next year. <laughs> like, so that's wild. Yeah, that's. I don't even know. When's me. the last time that's happened? I can't even think of another time that's happened. That a game has been announced for a date. Yep. And we're November, so okay. about three months till the date of the game, and then it gets delayed, delayed to um, to nothing, to like to it doesn't exist now, almost. <sighs> like I'm being a hyperbolic, but still, like that's pretty crazy. I mean, to me, at least. Final Fantasy 15 kept getting delayed. That's a good point. Remember, yeah, they had that nice. whole they had that whole. Delete. Four times, I think. I mean, yeah, okay. See, they had that whole thing to where the event where September or something, and that what when did that game came out? How many months? How many months later? It wasn't months, was it? Was it? I think it was one month. Oh no, it was three weeks after the date they said. I think or something like that. That was wild, dude. They had an event. They spent millions of dollars on that event, and they delayed it like a week later, dude. That was I couldn't. I just what it's crazy, dude crazy okay uh you get that date i'll go over november to so it was supposed to come out september it came out november wow, 29th two months. i was way off so yeah Jesus, two months dude <sighs> that's how i was like, i bet Whoa. you didn't expect this turn espn.com okay. <laughs> over on ESPN.com by rob brusley okay Blizzard Entertainment will unveil the next iteration of its popular overwatch franchise featuring a new logo new game modes maps heroes and pve features at BlizzCon this week, according to a BlizzCon source and a BlizzCon training document, which included information about Overwatch 2 and was entailed by ESPN. It was early reported in June by Kotaku that Blizzard was working on a PvE-focused Overwatch 2, with Blizzard ass- assigning resources from other areas in the company. They included a canceled StarCraft first-person shooter game using the Overwatch engine. The document obtained by EB- uh, EB- ESPN offers a first look for what to be expect from Blizzard's franchise esport title at BlizzCon, which begins on <clears> Friday. <throat> Notably, the Overwatch logo now has a small orange 2 index in the top right corner. Hero talents and in-game armors are coming to Overwatch 2 PvE, and one of the missions will be a four-player story experience set in Rio de Janeiro. As opposed to the 6v6 gameplay in the original Overwatch, according to the document, Blizzard did not respond to a request for comment. While much of the focus will be on the story and narrative elements, Overwatch will see its first new mode since the game was released in beta in 2015 with Push set to be unveiled alongside Assault, Control, Escort, Hybrid. Push will be set on a new map based in Toronto, according to the document. Since Overwatch has released, many of the competitive Overwatch community, including professional Overwatch League players, have voiced frustrations for some of the Overwatch's less popular game modes, such as Assault, and have been requesting a new variant on which to play. The Overwatch development team has made significant efforts to appease concerns from this Overwatch community, including implementing game 2 2 2 Roll Lock and Roll Q into their game. No idea what that means. Um, oh, no, I get it. Roll Lock, meaning when you're a roll, it locks out the roll, and Roll Q, meaning you can pick what you want to play as, and mm-hmm. then I'll queue you into a game that, that needs that player. I'm smarter than I thought, Alex. Look at you. That's about it. Does this excite you? Are you interested um, in any of this? Oh well, yeah, I mean, I want to play. I mean, I I love Overwatch. I just haven't played in a while. Right. Would but, this uh, bring you back? Overwatch two. Yeah. 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 Then I honestly, sound, I mean, I want to play. You Overwatch don't sound now, that excited. Well, yeah, I want to be completely pl- honest with you. Well, it's because you know it's why? Like, it's because yeah. it, depending on when it comes out, yeah. I ain't gonna have time for this. <laughs> This is going to be online. I, right. I mean, there's going to be great story games. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just do that. Right. Of course. I agree. Yeah. What if it's like Destiny? That'd be weird. Interesting. Yeah. I don't it know. says it has PvE content. So, like, what if you unlock stuff? Unless it's going to have a story now. Well, it said it was focused on story. I do not think it will have a story mode, though. Yeah. Not too much there, so we'll move on. Okay. Ars Technium. Over by Kyle Orland. So long, Origin. EA comes back to Steam with new games. For the first time since 2012, mm. Electronic Arts is once again publishing new games on Valve's Steam platform. The publisher announced today a pre-order page for next month's Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is already up on Steam Store. And EA promises that, quote, other major titles like The Sims 4 and Unravel 2 will be available on Steam in the coming month. I just wasn't expecting Unravel 2 and Steam <laughs> and Sims 4 to be the two on there. Multiplayer titles like Apex Legends, FIFA 20, and Battlefield 5, meanwhile, will be available on Steam next year. Good lord. Whoa. I was expecting in a few weeks, not next no. year, with crossplay between the Steam versions and those EA's existing Origin service. Long time coming. 
EA's return to Steam marks a sea change for the company's PC gaming plans, which for years have focused on Origin and its primary, and in most cases, exclusive sales channel. The company's Steam release is slowed to a trickle in 2012. By 2013, the only new EA content on Valve service was DLC for various Sims games. Back in 2011, when EA announced that Battlefield 3 would not be available on Steam, EA cited Valve's restrictive terms of service that made it more difficult to distribute patches on DLC through the game client itself. While there was some merit to that argument, the fact that EA didn't have to pay a <laughs> Valve a 30% revenue of the cut sales through Origin might have also played a continued decision to avoid Valve's popular storefront. I'm sure it did. Yeah. But <laughs> Origin faced pushback from a contingent of Steam invested gamers almost immediately thanks to part of its lack of features and, and prospect of managing a separate new friends list. Alex, who does this sound like to you? It sounds like Epic Games, doesn't it? <laughs> it yeah, sounds like the new Epic Games store. Yeah. Exactly the exact same scenario. Um, EA Executive Vice President Andrew Wilson acknowledged uh, Origin's poor public reception in 2013, saying those who had less than optimal experience with the service, quote, we get it, we understand it, we have heard, and we have made some changes already in terms of how we do things, and we're looking at more changes, and we'll talk about them in the coming months. I love that. It's just like, we get it, all right? We, un- we understand it sucks. We'll try to fix it. In the ensuing years, EA tried to set Origin apart by introducing Origin Access, which I always thought about getting, but never did, because I don't play on my PC enough. Uh, yeah. Do you remember I that? Like- I mean, it's basically I just, Game Pass. For, yeah. yeah, I just don't. I mean, who, I was about to say who uses Origin anymore, but I guess I was well, anybody with to. EA. Yeah, you yeah. have to, right? If you want to play Dragon Age, you have to. Yeah, I uh, guess get so. it on there. If you want to play Anthem, you have to get it on Origin. Stop it! You can't get you can't it. Can't take Steam. it with a safe face. I know, right? Um, but uh, <laughs> anyways, moving on. Does this excite you? Get your route up. We're not PC guys, so you, say, won't, you won't I, hear us get excited about this. I hope this I excites have, someone out there. I have my PC has problems opening internet, <laughs> so me trying to just even download a, a gaming launcher, right? I think it would destroy my thing, right? For sure. So no. Do you think this is all some sort of planned scheme to kind of take away EA's, uh, e- sorry, Epic Games, their storefront? Um, I think I feel like Steam is. Uh, downhilling. Really? So ever ever since the whole Epic thing, mm-hmm. so I feel like maybe they uh, they like this is their way to incentivize. They, they, yeah, this is this is their way. Who do you think approached back who? Up. Did EA approach Steam or did Steam? Because pro- honestly, I, can, I think Origin there's... approached EA. Be like, hey, I can see you guys are having issues. We'll come back mm-hmm. for a certain fee. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a good fee too. Yeah, you know they're like ten percent. Yep, and they're like fine. Yeah, they'll be like, yeah, dude, we need 30% it. 30% is nothing to scoff at. That is a lot of money. That's for almost a half. Storefront. That's pretty that's wild. A, that, I get I mean, it. That's a third. That's that's a lot of money. Yeah. I know they did change from that point, though. That was older. Uh, apparently, the um, new model uh, helps out bigger companies. So basically, the more copies you sell, the less you end up paying them. Okay. Um, I don't know 100%, so if you have like a, a way of explaining that a little better, you can, of course, tweet tweet at us or leave a comment or something, and we'll, of course, read it in the next episode. But I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Basically, the more you sell, the less you pay to incentivize bigger people to stay with them. Yeah. That is, of course, screw indie developers, but I guess they don't care. Moving on. This is exciting stuff. This is over on IGN by Adam Banker. Xbox console streaming starts today. Currently available for Xbox Insiders and Alpha and Alpha Skip Ahead rings in the US and UK. Following the public preview of Project X Cloud, Microsoft and Team Xbox are launching the Xbox console streaming preview beginning today and will allow participants to stream their Xbox One games from their console to a mobile device. Microsoft's principal program manager, Jonathan Hildebrandt, took to Xbox Wire to discuss this new preview program that is now available for Xbox Insiders in the Alpha and Alpha Skip Ahead. The program currently supports Android phones or tablets running Android 6.0 or higher with Bluetooth 4.0 and a Bluetooth-enabled Xbox One wireless required to play. That really rolls off the tongue. All of that, all of that just rolled off my tongue. Xbox console streaming needs at least 4.75 megabits up stream bandwidth with 9 megabytes per second preferred. Those users who have met all the above requirements can download the Xbox Game Streaming Preview app from the Google Play Store, which will then walk them through how to get Xbox console streaming working. It's also important to note that while the original Xbox and Xbox 360 back compatible titles are not currently supported, all Xbox <laughs> games are. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. Does this get your... Oh Jesus, my... Alex. Dude, Jesus, my Alex. phone is going nuts. The, the, we have an audience, and you're just over here bedinging. Listen, I just, you have tur- no I just opened my screen 
just to see if I got the email so I can try Project X Cloud, which I was just about to ask, do I need this email anymore? Is it open no, to the I, public now? It should be open. It should be open. It's okay. Just, you have to be in the alpha. Yeah, which I got it. Okay, so right. you have to download the app now. Cool. All right. I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, go do it. Okay. All right, cool. Have fun. <laughs> I want to try it out. What's cool is your console becomes the server, which then plays That's the weird. game. Huh. Weird, right? Yeah. I like it. But that's weird because it does not have Google Stadia's patent predictive play though, which of well, course breaks the entire experience for me. Well, the thing is, it's it's you're pretty much just remote playing from your Xbox, yeah. isn't it? Then I what mean, it, yeah, what, but it's a little I was more gonna, complicated. Okay, because I, I was gonna say that what if you're somewhere else? How can you use your Xbox as a as the server if you're like let's say like at an airport or something and you want to play the same X-Cloud way Project X Cloud will work? It just you turn it on. I'm assuming the app will turn the Xbox on for you, or you might have to leave it on. No. What? No to what? No. Just to everything? No. Like, like what if I'm you gone sound like, for like you, you like, sound like a I'm... guy? You sound like a guy that's in a, like like AI just became a thing, and he just looked at it and went, "No." Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to leave my Xbox on. Right. I'm arguing that you didn't have to. You just turn it on with your phone, uh-huh. and then I assume you just turn it off with the phone too, right? Because once you. St- Alex, <laughs> you really not like it. So once you turn it on, yeah, it's a it's a regular Xbox. Okay. So you just hit the you just like normal hold the Xbox button down and turn it off. Mm. You're really not sold on it. Sorry. I just don't understand. <laughs> I, I I get. Well, I will, I'll see what how it works. Okay. When it comes to that, you're not you're not with it. I get it. I get it. I just you're skeptical. It, yeah, a little bit. I don't Google need... Stadia comes out mm. in. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> no, Same as Disney no, Plus, and guess dude, what I'm going to be doing? And nobody cares, right? Can we say that, like, for sure? Does it, anybody it's care? It's because, first off, to get it, you need the $150 Founders Edition. Right. Well, to be fair, Alex, like, you need $300 for a system. For anyways. something that you don't know what it is yet? That's, I think, unfair, right? Uh, what do you mean, un- like, don't know? Like, this is the first this is the like like the first thing we're trying for the streaming okay. thing. No, I agree. So, okay, I can agree with that. So for the first time, what? we don't know what we're expecting. It's so you're... called Founders. Like they make it clear that this is beta. Well, they those don't... Founders must have now, bank. Now to be, now, to be, to be 150? fair, 150? No. 150? Alex, you what? You a, what? You have an Xbox One X in your living room. Yeah, I guess how much I paid for that. You originally you've paid five hundred. Guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know it. how you got it. All right. Yeah. Now, anyways, trade ins, man. It's <laughs> only 150. I feel like I that's pretty that. reasonable for technically a system. I guess that can run Cyberpunk as well as your Xbox One X can. Why <laughs> am I defending Stadia? I don't even care about Stadia. I'm just <laughs> so, saying. Which first th- off, you need the this thing to be able to play Stadia. So, for example, oh, the browser, which I'm sure everybody has. Yeah, I assume that's right. Um. Did they say what you can use a regular controller and stuff like that? Do you need They've it? been super. Do so you need the Stadia you can controller? Use, so you can use controllers. Uh-huh. They've already said it won't be Bluetooth, though. They had to push that back. They're like, none of your controllers will be Bluetooth. You're going to have to wire it up. So if I'm playing the Google Chrome browser on my phone, how am I wiring that? a good that? question. Now you see can my you dilemma? Look, can you look? Look, I'm not defending. Look, I'm not paying for it. So I, I'm not saying you are. Me. I'm just saying I'm not. I kind of want it, but no. <laughs> I want. I want to do it for the podcast. Um. Well, how about Google? Help us out here. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Google Z? I forget his his um. I, I forget know. their names. I I had to tip my tongue. The the actual head of game development is like hook us up, man. But I forget his name. But um, I mean, really, all you need is a Chromecast, and I heard those are good anyways. No, yeah, yeah. So I was tempted to get it because. 150 for the Chromecast by itself it was a pretty good deal. And then you get three months of Stadia, and then I can give you three months of Stadia. Yeah, yeah I got you. I get it. it yeah. I'm not sold on it. Again, I haven't bought it. I'm going to wait, and I'm going to watch. I'm gonna read articles about it as I'm watching Disney Plus on that week. All right? That sounds good because yeah. I'm going to be doing the same thing because yep. everyone's going to be making – I can already see the clickbait article of like, oh, my God, Stadia is not working. Like, oh, surprising. Yep, and guess what's going to be working? Disney Plus will there not we... be working on launch. You're crazy. You don't think if you... so? No. The launch of a new service? That's good Name point. another service that's launched flawlessly. Did Netflix launch flawlessly? 
that's a different. I mean, like it a does full la- No, no, I mean like a full launch, new launch. Okay. Uh, Day one. What was the last one that we that did? Ju- they, what's the last service that had come out recently? DC I mean, Universe. I would say uh, on Switch. Switch. No, no. DC Universe just that, that like on this, Xbox One or which anything. which DC Universe the, came the out stream, five times. The streaming service. I mean, which oh, one? Oh, DC Universe. Yeah, okay. DC Universe streaming oh, service. Right. That just get that. What? How many people are watching DC Universe? Yeah, but that's I'm not a... throwing shade to DC Universe. Yeah, but I mean, it still works. I guess a good point. You win. <laughs> <laughs> I want a cookie. <laughs> PlayStation View will shut down in June, January 2020. This is again over on IGN by Matt Kim. Sony has announced that it will be shutting down its PlayStation View TV streaming service on January 30th, 2020. The company cites a hugely competitive field and has a desire to focus on its core game business as reasons why it's pulling out of the TV streaming business. Quote, today we are announcing that we will shut down PlayStation View service on January 30th, 2020. Sony Active Entertainment Deputy President John Codera writes in a new blog post, quote, unfortunately, the highly competitive pay TV industry with expensive content and network deals has been slower to change than we expected. Because of this, we have decided to remain focused on our core gaming business. I love that he threw it to, like, the TV business. It's their fault we weren't successful. (laughs) Yeah. Sony launched PlayStation View in 2015 as a cable-cutting internet TV service. Members could watch several TV channels live over the internet, including channels like CBS, ABC, Fox, NBC, Universal, and more, starting at $40 a month. Pretty good. In 2018, PlayStation View reported 745,000 subscribers. While PlayStation View came out relatively early in the paid TV space, it and was well received by critics. There's been creeping competition from companies like YouTube, Hulu, and Sling TV in recent years. I have Sling. That's really good. Yeah. I've never tried PlayStation View. Have you? No, at first, I'm not gonna lie. When I, as soon as I saw that, I was like, "What is that?" But I'm like, "Oh, okay, that's yeah, that that TV it's their service TV thing." thing yeah. I, I heard... literally looked at it. Never again. <laughs> never again. No. You're, you're, you look at it and you're like, mm, "Not touching." I glanced that. at it because it was on my on my PlayStation when I first got it. And I was like, "Nah, nah." I get it. I, well, I mean, I didn't get it, so I wasn't hyped about it either. I have Sling and I cut cable a long time ago, so I'm fine with it. Yeah, Sling's super nice. Alex, that's the news for the day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. We got nothing else. You got anything else? Uh, no? No. No? No? You I'm got just, that face where it's like, no? No. I'm just ready to go play some Destiny and Call yeah, of Duty. Yeah, me too. How are you liking Destiny? Enjoying it. We uh, Halloween events I kind of wanted to touch on. Of yeah. course, we're getting that Halloween feeling, right? We're dabble around Halloween. that for a bit. Um, what do you feel on the Halloween events overall? What's your favorite? What, what you've really been liking? Because Halloween events are becoming more popular every year, I feel, right? Yeah. Destiny, Borderlands. Or just seasonal events, you mean, I guess. Because it's not just Halloween. Good it's point. Se- seasonal events. No, it's a good point. I, I respect that. Um, Even in Destiny, they have Valentine's Day events, yeah. too, which is really cool. Yeah, I mean, Christmas. Uh, did, they, I think, did they do a Christmas mm-hmm. one? I forget what it's called, but okay, it's some remember. event. I think it's called The Dawning or something like okay. that. Okay. I don't remember. But no, I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm... um. You have to collect candy, which is fun. Which is fun. And yeah. then I, apparently there's a, uh, the raisins that we got apparently is involved in like this long string of activities and mm-hmm. at the end you get something funny and then you'll have that for something else so i want to do that too yeah i like the masks they're they're pretty funny too i like how mm-hmm. you can change them now this year though yeah you can and yeah. uh like i i got well after we did the forest uh i got lord shax's helm <laughs> like mask so yeah, I'm i assume that right that's now. really big yeah i have the traveler so i'm just yeah. a giant Dude, white you look like mysterio gold. Yes, I'm Mysterio. Yeah, so like if you're the warlock and you have that cloak, it kind of works. Or What's if his they, name? Think about the I'm hunter. I'm Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, I'm God. Sexy. I got I got special effects hands. And you're fake. <laughs> all the time. Spoilers. Spoilers. If you haven't watched this movie already, all right? You're not going to watch Spider-Man. Anymore. Yeah, right? <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for listening. That is us for the week. If you have any uh, gripes, comments, concerns, thoughts, or ideas, hit us up. Uh, Twitter.com at EVM9000 at Crave Flips, flips Greater at Easy Achievers everywhere. Easy Achievers goes live every Friday. Don't remember to stop by any podcast service, any YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe, share us. That helps a lot. You have no idea. Yep. Uh, give us the dollar over on Patreon.com slash Easy Achievers. That helps us a lot. That will help me recoup my uh, money from this new guy. God bless Yeti Mike. Have to buy now. Yep. Uh, I hope. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Next. Next episode. I'll sound like myself again. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you'll sound like Alex again. Because in my head, Alex as the um, air flight attendant. 
Give me, give me your best <laughs> air, air flight attendant right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please <laughs> that's your super perfect. <laughs> keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> oh God, I'm laughing too. We, we, we. Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. We're about to take some heavy landing here. <laughs> oh, this is your captain speaking. All, abo- all aboard! <laughs> all aboard! All right, on that. Note, I don't know what. On that note, I barely am on. You I'm, guys have a good day. See you. <laughs>